Good morning, everyone, and thank you for joining us on Morning Markets from True Potential. Before delving into to asset markets, I just wanted to remind everybody about our podcast, Do More With Your Money. Please do have a look out for the episode that came out from Friday. Looking at asset markets over the course of, of Friday, then a better day on Friday, a positive for performance across equity markets in particular, really bringing together over the course of week just one of ongoing volatility in markets. The number of factors really at play over the course of the week and indeed has a has been over the past number of months and really it's the economic backdrop the potential for that slowing a little bit company results last week also inflation inflation expectations and the path of interest rates that comes as a result of that and also worth noting just the volatility that we do see in currency markets as well I think the other thing last week which was very much to the fore was politics. We're all very familiar with the politics here in in the UK and indeed that was part of our podcast last week. But the other aspect of what was happening in Italy and really the challenges that we're seeing there with the the, the unity government of of Mario Draghi and indeed over the weekend it looks like that will be further challenged. And that probably leads us into thinking about some of the important aspects for the week ahead in particularly what we hear from the ECB Expectations there are that we will see an interest rate increase. Some debate at the moment whether it's 0.25 or 0.5%. Probably given the backdrop, the other aspect that the market will be interested to hear is how they think about the divergence that's happening in bond yields between the likes of Germany at the core and then what's happening in Italy exacerbated at this point in time by the political backdrop. So let's look out for, for what we hear there. The other central bank speaking this week, the Bank of Japan, clearly we've seen very significant yen weakness, particularly against the dollar, trading at a 24-year low. Very interested to hear if the Bank of Japan comment on that and indeed how they are interpreting the weakness that is in the yen at this point in time. Inflation continues to be front and centre of all of our discussions and indeed what we as individuals see when we go to the petrol station or we're going and doing our grocery shop We hear from inflation numbers this week in the UK. They certainly only seem to be moving in in one direction at this point in time. And then we'll continue earnings seasons. Earnings across um, from US companies reporting their second quarter and a number of UK companies reporting their first half. Really, the thing there is that we're not too interested in what the companies are saying about what has happened. It's very much about what they're talking about to the future and how they're thinking about their sales, what's happening in terms of costs, supply chain issues, labour issues, and how that's likely to impact their outlook for the second half of this year and into 2023. The other point I just wanted to mention from Friday, we had US retail sales, consumer an important driver of the US economy. We saw that number come in a little bit stronger than expected, but I just wanted to remind everybody that retail sales aren't adjusted for inflation. So whilst we saw year on year retail sales in the US up some 8.4% year on year, it's worth noting that as we heard last week, US CPI is at 9.1%. So not keeping up with the, the pace of inflation there. I'll leave it there for today, but please do join us again tomorrow. Many thanks. If you're interested in taking your investing to the next level or would like to know more about the options available to you when you retire, then download our free guides to ISAs and pensions. These are available in the video description below.